All right, what we're going to go over is setting password protection on things in 2008 server. Now, this is a brand new VM, so we'll see how this goes. What I'm using is uh, 2008, and it's 64-bit. So, uh, first thing I need to do is install IIS. So, I'm going to go to computer, right-click on that, manage, and I need to add this role. So, there's my roles. And let's see, right now I don't have any roles. So I'm going to add IIS. And see, next. And I want to add that. And immediately when you do it, it says I've got more stuff I want to drag in. We've done this in the installation, and that's cool. We'll jump on to the next part. Say OK. Now, select role services. This is when you get to pick and choose what parts you need, what parts maybe you don't need. And I need under security I need Windows authentication. Now what this means is we're going to, have to put in a username and password. That's authentication. But we want it to be something that's on the Windows machine. They're going to be local. Now this is not a domain controller and this machine is not attached to a domain, I hope. Um, but it's just a standalone box. So any users would have to be defined locally on this box. Later on we may play some with uh, with users on another domain or something, but for right now we're just going to do basic Windows authentication. So that that's the extra checkbox that needs to be checked. Then you can just run through, say next, and install, and it'll go ahead and install. And I'm going to stop the video while it cranks through this. Okay, I just hit the close button when it finished. One thing that I did find, well, here we are, roles. If you notice, if you get to this roles screen, because sometimes you'll install this and want to go back and add it later. Um, you could get to the server manager like I did, just right click on my computer and manage, and it would take you right here when you clicked on roles. And under the security section, you can see right here, Windows authentication is installed. So you can install or uninstall the stuff that you need right through here. Now, one thing about the VM that needs to be fixed, I'm going to say control alternate. Well, I'll just do this. Do that and click on the little thing here. I notice that my network adapter is set to NAT. And I don't want that. So I double clicked on it and I'm going to make it bridged. If you leave it as NAT, it would use the same IP address as your host, which is not a good thing if you're wanting two different machines. There we go. Now I'm going back to this. And there we go. Um, just to check that, I'm going to say start run CMD. This machine's IP address is 135, and I'm getting that from right there. Let's see what my host machine, start CMD over here on my host, and this is my Windows 7 host. I'm going to have to minimize this so I can see it. There we go. If I do IP config on it, it is 104. So my host machine is 104. And this machine is 135. Okay. Let's make some real simple web stuff. Computer C drive inetpub www.root. And uh, I said last time that you're better off renaming those, but just to keep things consistent, I've not done it. Um, new text document index.html and you should recognize the problem. I had a guy go through this today. He searched and searched through his HTML code and couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. The problem is view uh, no tools. Tools. Folder options. Yeah. It's hiding and helping me with my extensions by hiding them from me. Yeah. It's tools and folder options. So now yeah, in his HTML, he was calling index.html or whatever, and it couldn't find it. It wound up being just a crazy thing to try to troubleshoot, but index.html, open with, and I'm going to click this little plus to get it to show me some more programs there, notepad. And I will now create some of my beautiful HTML code that everybody loves so much. HTML. HTML. I'm 
this is my main page break and I, I want to make some links I want to make a link to a single file and then I want to make a link to a directory so I'm going to say a hypertext reference equals I'm going to call it file1.html so that's got to be in the same directory as my index.html so there's that one and I'll throw a break in there and I'm going to say secret is going to be a directory and let's see chickens secret dogs so right here I'm pulling a file called filed1.html just from the local directory these two are going to be pulled from a directory called secret chickens and dogs and notice I'm not doing anything with rights just yet because before you start applying rights you need to make sure that stuff is actually going to work and this was file1.html.txt yes I'm sure I want to change it with notepad HTML this is file 1 alright that's some beautiful code there now I'm going to make a directory in here new folder secret and I'm going to copy this guy into there just to give me a jumping off place I'm going to call it chickens. Did I say chicken or chickens? If I have to tinker with it, I may have to. Um, this is the chicken file. And copy chicken and make dogs. chickens and dogs I'm going to bump back up a directory just to make sure there's index secret chickens and dogs so theoretically this ought to work um, I may have to point it to index.html but to keep that from even having to do that let's let's go ahead and fix it I'm going to say start programs administrative tools uh, yes what I like to do sometimes is just drag this on out to the desktop if I'm going to be using it a lot sites default websites I want to make it my default page so default document and it's got index.html in there I'm going to move it up move up move up very good so now I should be able to hit this with my web browser and get something out of it 192 168 254 135 was that what it was there it is 135 this is my main page file1.html that worked chickens that worked dogs that worked so I have a working website nothing fancy but enough to check and see how the rights are going to work. Alrighty, so let's go back now and apply some rights. Okay, let's create some users. I'm going to say right click manage and configuration local users and groups and again just to reiterate these are local these are not part of a domain this is just a just a local machine and I want to prove that to myself if nothing else right click on my computer properties and let's see work group is just work group it's not part of any kind of domain it's just there by itself so that's cool back to where I was right now I have three users 
and I'm going to say new user Jethro description ZZZ I like to start stuff with ZZZ because it's going to shove it all the way to the end um, there I'm going to give him password P A S S W O R D P A S S W O R D and I'm going to uncheck user must change at next login because he's never going to log in um, E L L I E I'm just going to call it Ellie and I'm going to make her Z Z Z and her password is going to be C R I T T E R S I'll be fancy with hers Critters, create and close. It says three users if I say groups back to users there. Now I've got five users. Now when I sort by description, it puts all my ZZZ stuff here at the very end. That was the reason for that. All right, so I've got two users. Good enough. Now, when you do security, not just in IIS or Windows or whatever, you have different layers of security. IIS is going to be doing some kind of security on its own. It can say, let's hand over these rights and stuff to a domain controller. Let's hand it off to an LDAP server someplace. Let's do whatever. It can do its own rights. But beneath that, you can set rights on the file system itself, and that's what we're going to do. Sometimes, uh, specifically with FTP, you can give somebody rights to a file or directory, but if FTP says you can't write to it, you're stopped right there. So. You have to look at all the levels. Okay. My computer, C drive, INET pub, www root. First off, I want to change rights on file1.html. Now, how did file1.html get whatever rights it has? It, in it inherited them from www root. So if I say security, that's what it picked up from www root. Now, what I want to do, Jethro is a member of users and Ellie is a member of users if I'm not mistaken just by default so they're gonna have rights so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this so if I say edit users remove it's gonna to complain to me so here's what it's complaining about it's saying okay you have this relationship this file with its parent directory and What's cool about this is if you change the rights on the parent directory, it changes the rights on this file too, and you've got that relationship. Do you mean to tell me you want to break that relationship? And right now I do. I want to break the relationship between the parent and the child. So I'm going to say OK. And we're going to go through, it's got the same thing, I'm going to say cancel, and go through advanced. Going through advanced, I can say users and edit users here we go include inheritable permissions from this object's parent and that's the way it's going to be by default so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck that and it's going to say okay you've gone to all this trouble you seriously want to break the relationship parent and child what are the new rights going to be on the child because you've broken this relationship do you want me just to flush it clean that'd be remove and give the file no rights and let you build them from scratch kind of a hassle or you just copy what it's already got and that will give you the opportunity to, to monkey with it from there so I said copy and then I'm going to remove users and then apply OK and OK and notice users is now gone okay I want to give Jethro rights to it so I'm going to say edit add J-E-T-H-R-O enter Jethro Bodine it figured it out so Jethro just has basic read, read, execute. That's OK. Apply and OK. There's Jethro. Everything's OK. So that's for that file, just that one file. OK, now I'm going to work on this directory. I'm going to go through the same song and dance with it. Security and edit and where was advanced? Might as well go to advanced now. And I'm going to work on users edit include inheritable permissions from parents object going to kill that off say copy and then I'm going to wipe out where's users 
users remove okay and they're gone okay and I'm going to add edit add Ellie so Ellie is going to have rights to that directory so Ellie's got rights users is gone now not the I users just users okay and okay Jethro has rights to file one Ellie has rights to secret all right ready for the drum roll we shouldn't have to restart the server or anything well restarting the server wouldn't I don't think it makes sense because it's not a function of the server it's a function of the file system now then this guy if I just click on one of these it's going to bring it back out of cache which is not good let's say control F5 file one unauthorized access access denied due to invalid credentials I did this earlier I forgot a step it never threw up a, a login box and let's see if we can see why I've done the the file rights we've gone through that whole song and dance I need to tell the website that that's how we want to do the authentication default website authentication and it says Windows authentication it's installed but it's disabled so I'm gonna right click on that and say enable and that should be good to go now let's bring back my browser go back control F5 file 1 there we go username and password now this was for file 1 so that should be Jethro J-E-T-H-R-O and I just made him P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D this is file 1 woohoo chickens let's try something J-E-T-H-R-O P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D should that succeed or fail should fail because it didn't give Jethro rights to this we gave Ellie rights to this okay it did fail Ellie and her password was critters C-R-I-T-T-E-R-S chickens file and just for giggles let's go back if I click on dogs I go immediately to dogs how come because I'd already authenticated and told the browser this is who I am so it gave me rights to whatever I had alrighty so there's our example